So hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Escape the Rat Race Radio. Today's interview is sponsored by Wealth Talk, my other podcast which will help you to create, build and protect your wealth. And you can subscribe to that by heading on over to www.wealthtalk.co.uk. And you can also check out the full show notes and the video recording of today's conversation over at www.etrr.online forward slash podcast 88. And we also have a very special freebie today, which is a copy of my guest's brand new book, Win, How to Succeed in the New Game of Business. So the title of today's podcast is How to Win in Business, and I'm joined by Roger Harrop, the CEO expert, who's going to share his wealth of experience with you around why now is the best time to be in business ever. And I also hope that we'll be able to demystify some of the common beliefs that business is complicated. So on that though, let me welcome Roger Harrop to Escape the Rat Race Radio. How are you, Roger? I'm great, Christian. Nice to be with you. Wonderful to have you here today, Roger. And where in the world are you right now? I'm just south of Oxford. I'm in my office at uh, at home and the sun is out, but I don't know for how long. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know that you're a, a highly in-demand man. And... Um, Let's jump right into this, Roger. Okay, so you're the CEO expert and um, you speak all over the world. So would you mind sharing with our listeners exactly what it is that you do and who you help? Okay, so uh, as you've said, I, I, I call myself, it wasn't my idea, but one of my clients said, you're the CEO expert. So that's what I did call myself. So um, yeah, what I do is is I speak, uh, I speak at conferences, I run masterclasses, uh, I act as a non-exec director, I do consulting, but it's all around business and it's all around uh, keeping business simple because I just think it is, you know, um, and uh, I've done that now in 49 countries. A bit sad I keep a record really, isn't it? But but I love it. Um, uh, a lot of it is with small businesses, medium businesses, startups. Equally, uh, I work with the biggest corporates in the world. So it's right across and, and it's every sector pretty well. Yeah. So, Roger, was there ever a time earlier on in your career when you were self, you yourself were stuck in the rat race, so-called, and, you know, <laughs> did, did that lead to your business career? How did it all begin? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a professional engineer. Uh, sorry, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession and a marketer, and I started out burning ambition. So I got fairly early. I got into general management, generally running electronics and engineering businesses every three years pretty well. You know, an even bigger company, an even bigger corporation. I ended up running a PLC uh, for seven years, which five and a half years of that was magnificent. The last 18 months were something else, but uh, that's perhaps not for now. Um, and really after that, and we were taken over, I was in that position, which was perfectly expected where, you know, I then had to look for another job. And, you know, that was at the point really where I thought, you know what, this is daft. Um that actually I'd much rather be working for myself. And I sort of promised myself two things when I set up on my own. I promised myself I'd try and enjoy every day. And the second thing I promised myself was that I wouldn't take any nonsense from anyone. Because of course in the corporate world, when you're working for someone else, you have to take that stuff. You have to take the nonsense that you get one way or another. Uh, and working for yourself is something quite different. And I still to this day, I mean, it's 15 years ago that I set up on my own. I still get a kick out of sending an invoice out with my name on it. I still get a massive kick out of just getting an email. I had one just three days ago from somebody and I honestly don't remember them, but they attended one of my master classes a year ago and it just said, Roger, I just wanted to say thank you. We've had a record year. It's down to you. You know, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't. But, you know, that's what gives you a kick and you live and die by yourself. But of course, it is a big step to make. But once you've made it, honestly, you never look back. Yeah. Well, I know one of the words that comes up all the time when I'm speaking to people about, you know, why do you want to escape the rat race? It's the freedom that people are looking for. Yeah. And, and that yeah. freedom comes in many shapes and forms, you know, freedom of time and freedom of choice. And of course, the, the financial element as well that drives yeah. people towards starting a business, because there really is no limit, is there? When you're in control and you have your own business, the only limit, I guess, is yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, just a word, one little word of caution, I guess, which is I do find some people, 
because you literally live over the office, particularly when you start out. And you do have to discipline yourself to give your to give yourself permission to have time off. You've got to do that fairly early on, I think. Uh, otherwise, if you're not careful, you just burn yourself out because you're working 24 seven for your business. Now, there may be occasions when you've got to do that, but it can't be continuous. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, um, you know, I know you're an author, um, two, two books to your name, uh, mm-hmm. at the yeah. very least. And I wrote my first book last year and it, it did get to a point at Christmas where I felt pretty burnt out because you know, you, you're, <laughs> sure. you're doing you're doing so many things. And um, it is a it is a something that you need to be very careful of in those early days of starting yeah. out. Yeah. So we are talking today primarily to, to people listening, Roger, who who are at the early stages. Mm-hmm. They have either just started a business or or they're perhaps not even launched at the moment. So right. can you give any advice to those people in terms of how at the beginning you can, I guess, approach a new idea with a smart business mindset? Yes. I mean, I guess there's a number of a number of comments to make, but I guess just one big one perhaps is no matter what your business is, maybe, you know, you've had this amazing idea, maybe it's a techie idea, maybe it's um, uh, retail, whatever, something that's absolutely brilliant. But actually, for the first, what should we say, two years of, of, of your career, you've got to be marketing, you've got to be marketing probably three quarters of the time that you are working, because businesses you know, just to get on the radar to show how good you are at what you do, you've got to market. And I guess that, you know, I mentor new speakers an awful lot who, who are just self-employed, just starting to work for themselves. And one of the things I say to them is don't fill your diary with work. And they say, well, why, for heaven's sake, that's what I'm trying to do. And I say, well, no, no, sort of on average, you've got to allow 20 percent of your time and that's a day a week for marketing, for promotion. Otherwise, you're just not going to get there. You cannot, and I've come across quite a few startup businesses that have found themselves maybe even two, three years in relying on one or two customers. You know, that's sort of dangerous. You've got to work hard at widening the number of customers you've got and continually marketing, never stop. Um, Even if it's something you don't like, you've got to find a way to do it. And of course, these days, it's quite a bit easier than it used to be. Mm. Well, that brings me on to an interesting one then, Roger, because we talk a lot about personalities and obviously individual characters and some people have certain skills and uh, are good at creative yeah. areas, good at coming up with ideas, yeah. you know, the typical kind of entrepreneurs that we think of, whereas others are much more detailed and a little bit more reserved mm. and introvert. So what would you say to someone who, you know, they're starting their own business and we all know at the beginning, you've got to wear all those hats, right? Because <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you, you, you just may not have the income and, sure. and the funds to, to outsource. So for someone who's thinking, oh, I've never done marketing, I have no idea how to do marketing. Are you suggesting they should learn or are you suggesting they should maybe partner with other people that might be able to help out? Um, how, how would they approach that? I, I would I would personally suggest both of those. I think... There is nothing like having some sage advice. You know, when you're starting out, it's not a non-exec director. It's not a a, a position like that or an independent director, but someone. And I know plenty of people out there who've been there and done it, have got the grey hair, as it were, and are more than happy just to spend a bit of time particularly helping new entrepreneurs. And it's just giving that little bit of advice from their their experience, the mistakes they've made, you know. Um, And particularly in the area of, of, of marketing, yeah. Yes, I think you do need to. Certainly, I don't think there is any area of your business where you can say, I'm not interested in that and I'm not I'm going to leave that to someone else. I think that is dangerous to say you're going to leave it 100 percent. You've got to have a bit of a feel for it all. Um, And, you know, maybe go to night school um, to, 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 to get to learn something about sales and marketing. If you don't know just that something that's getting in there uh, uh, about that area if it's something you don't know equally finance is another one you know you cannot leave in my opinion the whole financial side of your business 100 percent to your accountant again it's that word dangerous you can't do it you know it is your business and you need to just understand the basics of what a top line is and what a bottom line is and most importantly what cash is because small businesses disappear more often because of a lack of cash than they do a lack of profit. And that's just fundamental 
and I'm sorry, but you've got to you've got to understand the basics of that. And it isn't complex, although sometimes accountants like to make it so perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're talking about here really is is education. So yes, yes. And, and there's so much education. I know that, you know, you, you're often quoted of saying, you know, Bus- business is simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. <laughs> right. And, yeah. um, you know, how how is, how are things changed in terms of the fundamentals of starting a business from when you started 15 years ago, Roger, right. to today? You know, obviously, technology has changed dramatically yep. and, and, and that has made many things easier. But in terms of the fundamentals, and I'm talking about understanding who your customer is, understanding what their pain points are, you know, yep. your, your products, you know, your, yep. your, your margins, things like these. Yes. I- I mean, I think the first thing is in terms of business being simple, you know, at the end of the day, someone's got something to sell, somebody wants to buy, and maybe someone has to make something. That is fundamentally all it is. That's all any business is, you know, and whoever it is who's got something to sell, it's got to be attractive and that the, the, the people who want to buy it have got to know it exists and come along and buy it. As I say, maybe you have to make something, but 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 that just depends. How the fundamentals of change, as you say, Christian, is, is particularly online. I mean, it... We're very lucky in the UK, firstly, because it's very easy to open a business. You know, you can you can take out a business in, 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 in an hour if you want. You've got your own business. There is lots of advice around even the inland revenue, you know, produces books and, and, and online stuff that gives you loads of advice about whether you should be a sole trader or a limited company, all that sort of stuff. Banks equally give a lot of advice. It's, it's all there for you to get. Um, but it's also easier in the sense that, you know, it, even 15 years ago, you had to think about physical things. It may have just been paperwork, how you were going to get some, you know, find the money to produce some sales literature, um, uh, pay someone to do telemarketing for you, perhaps, or whatever it might be. These days, of course, you know, with the digital in the digital space, there's lots of opportunities there to promote yourselves. And to be honest, your footprint can look a lot bigger than you actually are without people knowing. You know, if you put together um, a website, maybe an app, whatever, that is really professionally done, and that, again, isn't all that difficult to do, um, you know, you're well on the way. And in terms of promoting yourself, a lot of it can be done for free these days. And another little tip, if I may, um, with a lot of clients of mine, smaller clients of mine, when we've been talking about, oh, how do we get this done? How do we get that done? You know, I've said to them, for, for example, if you're talking about, uh, say, marketing, go along to your yo- local university, actually ring up the professor of marketing there and say, look, you know, I've got a real life project here. Would that be of interest? My experience is almost all academic seats of year learning love to have real life projects to give to their students um, and they'll do it for usually nothing or it may be a a small amount and you'll get something pretty good that you certainly couldn't have done on your own probably yeah that's an excellent tip that really is thank you um what what do you have to say roger around the mindset of becoming a business owner um and especially if you've been in the corporate world for a number of years yeah um you know you're used to just turning up doing the job (laughs) uh you know picking up the paycheck every month and and it's kind of secure right you kind of know where you are although in the current age maybe you don't you know because uh, we never know if that job will be there when we walk in tomorrow but um in terms of the mindset of the employee versus the entrepreneur what, what would you like to say about that yeah Uh, One thing that needs to be the same is that you've got to discipline yourself, even though you're working for yourself, the hours you're working. In other words, uh, 8.30 or whatever it is, 8.30 on a Monday morning until five o'clock on a Friday night, I am working. Full stop. I do not get diverted. Even if I'm working from home, I must not allow myself to get diverted because I'm running a business. It's a professional job you are doing. And it's very easy to be, in inverted commas, part time. And it doesn't work. You know, it just doesn't work. Um, So I guess that's the first thing I would say. Um, What else? Um, The other mindset has got to be... uh, I, I, I can't emphasize this strongly enough, is getting paid. You know, there, uh, a, a wonderful order from a big customer is worth nothing until you've physically got the money in your bank. And I do come across an awful lot of small businesses who unfortunately don't like to chase for money, you know. And I'm sorry, it is fundamental. Um, 
and it starts with you know there are some it depends on the sector you're in to be honest but you know there are some sectors uh, particularly retail and food sector where you'll get an order and they'll say oh our terms are 90 days as a small business you probably can't live with 90 day terms so don't even accept them even if it's that wonderful first order you've got to be pretty disciplined about that because you could be in a position and i hate to say it like this where you know the business has gone bust and you've worked your socks off for this amazing order but the reality is you've got to have and and i find generally even though they have these rules if you question them you say look i'm a small business could we at least have you know for one of a better term progress payments could i have a down payment you know i understand that you you know you won't pay it all at once can i have a down payment can i have a halfway through because i am not in a position to fund it myself i think if you're honest with people and if you see them face to face and i'm a great believer in that it may be across the screen as we are now or it may be face to face you know they are human beings even though they may not appear it in, in that corporate world um and, and that business of getting paid, it's too often, and I'm afraid, if I may, accountants also may be giving you bad advice here. They may just say, oh, well, it's normal in your sector, it's 60 days. Don't accept that because you may not be able to live with it. So those terms are pretty important. And I, and I think the other thing I would say is my experience is almost all of us, and I include myself in that, undervalue ourselves. We're probably a lot better than we think we are. And you, you know, you. It's much easier easier to set high prices and then be prepared to come down a little bit from that than do it the other way around. It will never happen. And again, discipline yourself every single year. Put up your prices by at least inflation, just as a discipline. Do that because that's good business management. Mm, yeah. No. Absolutely. Great tips there. Once again, Roger. And how important is it to have the right people around you? You know, as a, as a one yeah, man, good question. one man at the beginning <laughs> running a business, you know, perhaps for many of our listeners, it'd be the first time they've run a business. So yeah. they're kind of, you know, flying in the dark, really. They don't quite sure. know exactly what they're doing. So in terms of mentors, in terms of peer groups and. Yeah. Oh, really, really important. And I think that's where you need to give it, give a lot of thought. You know, you've been in that corporate world a long time. Take some time out, write down on a piece of paper, every single person you have ever come across in business every single one and then sort of have a look at that list and 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 no matter whether they were customers clients people who work for you people you work for doesn't matter who they were just think about the ones who you think would be people who you would be minded to have mentor you maybe categorize them into the ones who perhaps know a bit about this or a bit about that or a bit about that and maybe the things you don't do and then contact them you know, there is nothing. People always respond well to asking for advice, in my experience. Just ask advice. Say, look, I'm taking that and smile at the same time. You know, I'm taking this big set. I'm step stepping up on my own. I always valued our relationship. I wonder if you could give me some advice. Then go and meet them. You know, go to them. Go and meet them. Maybe you have a, a, a cup of coffee together. And then maybe in that discussion, you can turn that into something more where you might want to say, well, look, I found this so valuable. Uh, could we take this further? Could I you know, contact you maybe if I've got a problem or maybe it's once every three months? You know, you've got to take it whatever direction makes sense. But before you know where you are, hopefully you've maybe got three or four. Don't have more than that. Don't, in my view, don't go as far as having a Facebook group because you'll have every single um, piece of advice and they will, uh, they'll be opposites. That, that doesn't work. You know, don't, don't know where you are. But have three or four people, I would say, who've got different skills different mindsets from the past people that you, who genuinely you value their advice uh, and again i think you'll you'll just find that so valuable and yeah. please when you get mega successful when you're becoming you know you've just made your first million don't forget those people because they're the people who enabled you to get there just make sure i don't know you send them a bottle of wine or something just something Mm. I think that's so important too. Yes, yes, indeed. And and I had some similar advice as well, which can apply even to, to kind of having mentors, perhaps they don't even have a one-to-one -one relationship with. And those could be, you know, people online that you yeah, see sure. around the world, which are you yeah. know, experts in their area. And certainly I know online marketing, there's so many people out there. It can be very yeah. easy to get overwhelmed, can't it, with the amount exactly. of information. Exactly. With so, all this conflicting advice and it's all stuff that's too much. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So pick, picking one or two and just, just really following them. Um, sure. 
So Roger, you you work with business owners and and companies, you know, from from huge, you know, huge corporates to yep. you know down to the startup as as we're talking yep. about now. Really, do you see any characteristics that span across those? You know, can you spot in some people they just have something that you know is a winning trait? Yeah, that's a very good question. Yes, I do, and 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 I think to, to be honest. It's a sparkle in the eye and fire in the belly. You know, it really is. It, it's not to do with qualifications. It's, it's, and I say, I guess a, a curiosity, curiosity and an interest in, in, in what's going on around you. you. You certainly do find people in the corporate world who are somewhat myopic and that's fine. You know, they're in charge of this or they're looking at this and that's what they understand and they really aren't interested in anything else around. Um, and you can tell the people, on the other hand, who've really just by the way they respond, they say, oh, that's a good idea. How about this? And what about that in a more broad sense than just a particular discipline? Um, so, yes, I think you can spot mm. a lot of people who who who, uh, who would be right yeah. to, to set up on their own. And one thing I've noticed over you know the last five years of, of running Escape the Rat Race and running meetup events in London every month and having yeah. people come back and you know tell me kind of updates on what they've been doing and and I often see people who are just kind of switching from one idea to the next and never really giving anything enough yeah. time. So quite. I know it's a difficult one to answer, Roger, but in terms of trying to help our listeners right now who perhaps are, you know, let's say plugging away a, a business and it just doesn't feel like it's quite going where they expect it to yeah. go. At what point do you pull the plug? Oh, well, I, I, I really can't answer that directly because it does depend upon your responsibilities. You know, I, if you've got, three children you've got a mortgage you've got outgoings um uh, you know that that's different from someone who's got no responsibilities at all and has got a load of money in the bank you know those are obviously the two extremes as it were uh, in both cases it's possible uh, and there certainly is a point where you've got to take the risk of jumping all i would say is i think that risk needs to be a considered risk uh, and as i say where you've got lots of uh, obligations uh, where you're going to let particularly your family down it's a bit more difficult i'm not saying don't do it but be aware of what you're doing and of course make sure you take your partner with you um, in, in whatever it is you're doing um, but yes you alluded to it there i think christian the big big thing is taking that final leap i do come across quite a few people who are still beavering away i mean they may actually be in a position uh, where you know they may even be working only three days a week but that two days a week doing what they really want to do remains at two days a week. And they've got to sometime take that decision to say, no, I'm going to stop that income that's coming in from those three days and I'm going to go and do this properly and I'm going to make it happen and, and, and so on. Um, and it's taking that big leap because until, you know, you cannot be, in my opinion, a part time entrepreneur, a part time, you know, small businessman. It, you've got to give it your all. Mm. it's 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 that as i say nine nine o'clock or whatever it is monday morning until five o'clock uh, friday night and sometimes at weekends but not always you know it's got to have your attention because it deserves it mm. now again coming back to this this kind of subject of over complicating business i mean what are some of the areas that you feel that business owners just over complicate which is just really <laughs> unnecessary yeah well I perhaps answer that a slightly different way, if I may, Christian. Mm. You know, for me, I think, um, you know, there are four fundamentals of business these days. And the first one is you've got to be exceptional. Now, it's easy to say, but you've got to be exceptional. It's absolutely everything you do, every way you do it, never, ever compromise. Um, you know, be exceptional. Set the standard at being exceptional. Don't set the standard at being anything less um, because that will be recognized by your clients and your potential clients, your employees in time and everyone else. And, and and you're in a great position when you're starting out a business because you can set that standard right from the beginning. You know what? We're going to be exceptional. Um, the second one um, is down the road. It's got to be a great a great place to work. OK, it's only you at the moment, but it has got to be a great place to work. Bear in mind, you know, talent has choices these days. Everyone talks about millennials. You know, they just won't work for you unless they have the same value. They share your values and 
and that they see that it's an exceptional business and it is a great place to work. So you need to think about that right from the beginning, even when you haven't got employees. The third one is the one I've already mentioned. You have got to constantly, uh, continuously prospect for business. You must never, ever stop prospecting for business uh, because if you do, you will fall off the edge of a cliff. You really not don't know what's going to happen with your existing uh, customers. You really don't know what's going to happen out there in the marketplace because the marketplace is changing incredibly quickly now. You know, you must be spending at least 20 percent of your time prospecting for business continuously nonstop. And then my last one is um, you've got to focus on the bottom line. You know, there is only one way to grow a business. I mean, there's actually only one way to grow a charity or a not-for-profit or a member association, and that's by generating something called profit that you reinvest in part or in whole into the business. There is no other way. So you do need to focus on that bottom line. I've talked a bit about pricing already, but, but all of these things, you do have to, you know, it's, it's something else that people don't like doing. You know, if you've uh, if you're paying rent for your office, if you're paying, I don't know, cleaners, you don't like us Brits particularly don't like negotiating, but you've got to do it. You've got to do it. You know, um, your accountant, you know, negotiate with them. Don't just accept the fee they give you. Uh, and if you work at it, you can probably get 10 percent off what you're paying. And that, again, goes straight on the bottom line to reinvest in the business. That is that is as much a part of the business as your technology or your marketing or whatever else you're doing. Mm, yeah. Um, are there any tools in particular, you know, um, that you would suggest that are essential things to help someone who's starting out in business, such as accounting software or uh, yeah. any kind of project management? Um, what are some of the things that would help these people? Yeah, I think accounting software, certainly, um, you know, so, and these days there's very simple accounting software, which you can take on board right from the beginning. And, and it's relatively cheap. Um, and I hate to say this, but don't always listen to your accountants because they don't necessarily know best. Um, but there is some cheap accounting software and it's best to have that from the beginning. Um, as you develop, as you start getting more and more customers or indeed more and more prospects, it really, really is worth having a very simple CRM system, customer relationship management system. That all sounds very grand and very marketing speak, but it can be a very simple one where fundamentally you have in one location, it, these days it could be an app, um, every single piece of information about that customer, every communication or potential, every communication you've had, you discipline yourself to put it down there, whether it's a phone call or an email or whatever. So all the information is there and that becomes an, um, um, a fundamental database for the business. And it really, again, is worth doing early on because I've been with too many clients where they've introduced it late on and then it's really hard work, you know, trying to translate from paper into that. Um, so, so yes, th those would be uh, those would be two. I would say um, uh, you've got to understand a bit about, uh, as I said at the beginning, what sort of business you are, whether you're a sole trader or a limited company, whether you want to be VAT registered, those sorts of things, where you can get easily get advice on that from either banks or, or, or I say, the Inland Revenue itself, or, or the Inland Revenue website is very good, by the way, uh, or your accountant. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. I would second a, a CRM as early as possible. It definitely is the, like the lifeblood of, of the, of the <laughs> yes. business there. So, Roger, you very, very kindly have uh, offered a copy of your latest book, oh, Win, sure. for, for our listeners today to download and head over to, uh, to the Escape Rat Race website to, to get a copy of that. Tell us a little bit about what they can expect to uh, learn from, from reading yes. that book. Um, well, it's a little bit, it, 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 it's a bit of what I was just been, I've just been talking about, really, because... You see, what I'm seeing out there now is, is well, frankly, I think this is the best time to be in business ever. And the reason for that is it's almost entirely due to what your, your focus for the future rather than anything you did in the past. What you did in the past is almost unimportant these days. Um, you know, people talk a lot about disruptors. But you know what? I think the world is such now that disruptors are the norm. You know, it's so. So what went on in the past is almost irrelevant. And that really opens the door to 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 everyone. And, and one of the things I'm seeing, actually, Christian, is I'm seeing quite a lot of small businesses starting to run rings around large corporations. And I talk about this a bit in the book. And that's very much on the back of di digital technology, because, you know, what I see in large companies is that technology falls into silos. Oh, that must be for 
oh, sales and marketing, or that must be for manufacture, when in fact it might find use anywhere. And it and, and this is technology that doesn't necessarily cost anything. I mean, one I just absolutely love, a QR code. You know, it's, the, it's that thing. It's not even really new technology anymore. That thing that looks like a... Um, uh, you know, a little, little square box. And you ask people in the UK in particular, well, oh, that we tried that. It's a waste of time. It's for sales and marketing. It takes you to a website. Do you know, in Japan, um, dementia patients, just like here, go walk about sometimes and get lost. So what are they doing in Japan? They're super gluing a QR code onto their thumb with their address in it. Everything single smartphone in the world now has a QR code reader and they've just gone out to the local population and said, if you find someone wondering about, read that and bring them home, would you? I just think that's brilliant. And my question always is, who's thinking like that in your company? Because that's what we need, because it's it's that use of technology, not necessarily complex, you know, AI stuff that could differentiate you from the competition and could help you motor forward. Um, you know, there's lots of examples. So I talk quite a bit about this new technology. You know, 3D printing is going to have a greater effect on the world than the Industrial Revolution. But we are not adopting it as we should. I work all over the world and I'm seeing in developing company, countries now, they're leaping ahead of us in terms of technology because we're trying to, to justify it every time. You know, I don't think that's the world we're in anymore. Um, we need to have a bit of a culture of, um, of a toleration of failure. And in a way, that's what you have in a small business. Um, and then really, I spend time on these four areas that I talked about, you know, being exceptional and a great place to work, uh, prospecting and, 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 and uh, focused on the bottom line. And I'm giving some tips in my book about, again, it's not about spending money. It's about having the right focus. Um, this is really relevant to slightly larger companies. But everywhere I go in the world, wherever I run a masterclass, I always ask the question, does every single one of your customers know about everything you do? Without exception, 80% of the room shake their head. And I say to them, so you're saying to me, you've got customers out there who love you, who are buying a product or a service you could provide from the competition just because you haven't told them. Is that right? And they, they nod their head. And I go, I can't use any other word. That's just stupid. You know, it isn't about spending money. It's about having a real focus on the simple stuff mm. and the common sense because there ain't much around, I don't think. Yeah, well, no, that's that's a, a very good point. It's, it's getting me thinking right now as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that you know, that, there's multiple reasons there for anyone listening right now to make sure that they're, they're downloading a copy of that. And as I say, head on over to etrr.online forward slash podcast 88 for all the show notes and information from today's episode. And Roger, it's been really, really, insightful and enjoyable speaking with you and um, I always, always ask my guests you know for the final words for those people listening right now perhaps they're they're squashed up on the London underground you know in this hot weather or stuck <laughs> stuck in a traffic jam and on their way to the office and they're just thinking you know there's more to life than this and they've got a real burning desire inside them to to make that change to take that leap but something's stopping them something's just holding them back and and it's most likely fear but what would you like to yeah. say to those people listening right now well i guess it is just do it isn't it just do it but do it consciously you know nothing like writing it down write down on a piece of paper the pros and the cons and see how you get the pros more important than the cons you know it, as i say it's got to be a considered risk but just go for it and please by the way enjoy every day because when you work for someone else let's be honest you do not enjoy every day when you're working for yourself make sure as far as possible you enjoy every day because it's down to you nobody else yeah very true indeed so roger if people would like to find out more about what you're up to and uh, your books and your speaking engagements where's the best place for them to head to okay so my website is roger harrop that's r-o-g-e-r h-a-r-r-o-p -R -R for peter.com and you can sign up for my newsletter newsletter only comes out once a quarter um but uh, it goes out to about 6,000 people around the world and there's some tips I put in there and all kinds of other stuff. So please have a look at those two. And I'm always on the end of an email. I will always respond. Roger at rogerharrop.com. Just contact me. I will always re reply. Oh, it's been absolutely fantastic today, Roger. Thanks so much for sharing all of your wonderful insights with our listeners. And um, I look forward to the next time that we speak. Me too. Thanks a lot, Christian.